y'all please stand. Oh, the perfect Son of God, and all His innocence, you walking in the dirt with you.
own blood and tears. How can it be that there's a God who weeps? Oh, there's a God who weeps. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me.
And I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry When I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started
What more could I say about Him? My God is love. What more could I say about it? My God is love. We come to you today, God, just just to praise you. Um, thank you for this. This this worship time. Um, it just means so much to us that we can do this freely and we can do this um, just in your in your word, in your family, in your community that you gifted us, God. We're not perfect and we all make mistakes, so many of them. And I just, I can't even fathom how you forgive us every single day because the amount of times that we mess up is immeasurable. But your love is even bigger than that, God. And we have salvation through that. So please speak through Dr. Signs. Just bless him and let him um, bless us with an amazing lesson, God, and help our hearts to be open and just free to listen to your word because you're talking through him, God. And we know that you're here and your presence is all around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, good deal. I'm looking out over the crowd, see a lot of faces here. Good deal. Good to be with you. Um, so let's do this. Um, somebody raise your hand and tell me how you're feeling this morning. <sighs> somebody raise your hand and t right here. Thank you. What's your name, my friend? Gunner. Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Signs. How are you feeling today? Happy. happy. Now you're going to be happier. You got a $5 Starbucks gift card. Don't get too excited. $5 is basically just a down payment on a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So. Good deal. Thank you, uh, Gunner. For What grade are you in, my friend? What grade are you in? Seventh grade. Awesome. Good to be with you. So Gunner's feeling happy. I'm feeling happy and sad, interestingly, on these two emotions. Happy because I get to be here with you. And, um, you know, I... I just always look forward to my, my time here in chapel in February. And um, you know, I've talked about a lot of things over the years, and uh, this is just one of my favorite uh, times to talk is when I get to be with you. So that's why I'm happy. I'm sad because check this out. For the first time in at least seven years, maybe eight, I'm speaking in chapel, and one of my kids is not in the room. So my kids have all grown up. They've moved on to bigger and better things, as they say. Uh, so it's kind of sad for me to be here and not have them here. But uh, again, I'm still happy to be here. So that's it. That's how Gunner's feeling. That's how Dr. Sines is feeling. What I'm going to talk to you about this morning is, um, you know, we've had this whole month on, on mental health, mental well-being, right? And so uh, Ms. Van Norman spoke, and she, she uh, looked at Scripture, the story of someone suffering, someone being hurting. And there were three people that could have helped, and the one that helped was the one that you'd really kind of least expect to help, right? Um, so she said, if we're going to help other people, we really need to enter into their suffering with them. And that was a great, uh, great talk. Um, and then also Dr. Burrow came and spoke, and he basically said one way to um, sort of protect yourself is a way to say it from... Um, mental illness, so to speak, is to remember who you are. Identity is so important. Okay, so that was lesson one, lesson two. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a very, very practical lesson today about how to keep yourself emotionally strong, uh, mental well-being, mental wellness. Okay, so here's an analogy. Let's say that my task today was to teach you how to keep your body healthy. So instead of mental well-being, what if we were talking about physical well-being? Well, the main thing I would say, I wouldn't talk about exercise, believe it or not. I would talk about nutrition because 80% of our body being healthy is about what we eat. It's not so much about exercise, it's about what we eat. So I would talk to you about nutrition. Okay. And then I might say things about, this is what you should eat, this is what you shouldn't eat, this is when you should eat, this is when you shouldn't eat. And that would be how I, I kind of coached you in um, uh, taking care of your body. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about not physical well-being, but mental well-being. How do we keep ourselves well emotionally? Well, one of the main things we do to keep ourselves well emotionally is that we learn how to manage our emotions. So the talk today is called a roadmap for managing emotions. So it might be, again, if we were talking about our body, it might be a roadmap to healthy nutrition. Well, this is mental well-being, so this is a roadmap for managing emotion. And if we practice what I'm going to show here, we stay emotionally healthy, which means we're less likely to experience mental illness or any kind of um, struggle psychologically. Okay. So again, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, I'm a psychologist, licensed psychologist, and so this is sort of in my world, uh, what, what I do professionally. Okay, so let's move forward then. That picture, um, I think it shows how some of us have felt. You know, on any given day we wake up and we feel like, man, we're just in this ocean, you know, and we're this, this ship trying to stay above water. And so the, there's winds and there's waves and you can't really see it, but those are seagulls and they're probably pooping all over that boat. And sometimes you have a day where you just wake up and you feel like, you know, the, the, the struggles that you have with your friends, with grades, maybe with family, um, with um, feeling um, insecure about yourself, all of these forces in life come at you, you know, um, as, as a student. And you feel like, man, I'm just trying to get through these waves, you know. Well, I've felt like that, and I still feel like that on any given day. And when I feel that way, I'm reminded of this quote, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said this, the wise man in the storm prays to God, not for safety from danger, but for deliverance from fear. It's the storm within that endangers him, not the storm without. And to me, that's pretty powerful. And so what I hear in that is that when I'm living my life and I feel like I'm that boat and I'm just trying to get through the waves and the tide and the current and the winds and the spray and the seagulls and all of that other nonsense, it's tempting to want to pray and say, Lord, make the wind stop. Lord, make the rain stop. Lord, make the seagulls go away. Lord, make my friends like me. Lord, make that boy like me or that girl like me. Lord, make my parents happy with each other. It's, it's tempting to want to pray into that. And that's fine. But this quote is saying, okay, you can pray into that, but there's a storm inside of you. And that storm is emotion, potentially. So what he's saying here is, ask God to go inside of you and calm the storm inside of you, because that's really, that's really the main storm you need to worry about. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, this idea that our emotions inside of us can be like a storm inside of us. And if we can manage that storm, if we can manage the, the emotion, then, you know, we can really get through whatever else is going on in life around us. Okay, so that's kind of the background. So today I'm going to talk about what are emotions. I'm going to define them. How can emotions make us act wonky? How can emotions make us act wise? And then what can I do to help a friend? So those are four questions that I'm going to be touching on in my time with you this morning. So number one, what is emotion? Emotion comes from the Latin root movere, and that means to move. Okay, so that, that's at the, the, the core of that word emotion is movement. That, that's really what it means. So you think about that. We can think of emotion as fuel, which is really kind of weird. Think about that. Anytime you feel happy, sad, anxious, depressed, um, nervous, excited, any emotion is fuel that builds up inside of us. It builds up, it builds up. So we can think of it like fuel is like gasoline or strong wind or electricity, whatever it might be. So whenever I experience these emotions inside of me because of what's going on around me, fuel is building up inside of me. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so emotion is fuel. Um, it's, it's power. Now, let's move forward. Now, how does emotion make us act wonky? So here's the deal with emotion. Whenever I feel emotion, excitement, sadness, depression, anxiety, whatever it might be, that's fuel building up inside of me. Okay. That fuel 
needs to be expressed. It needs to come out um, because the fuel inside of me, the emotion inside of me, um, if it doesn't come out, you know, it can be difficult. It, it can lead to, to some significant problems. So how does it come out? How does the emotion come out of me? How does that fuel come out of me? It comes out through behavior. And we call that, um, in, in counseling or in psychology, we call that acting out emotion. And that's what we do. That's how we get the fuel outside of us. So this emotion builds up, we act it out. So we can say things to, to get the emotion out. We can do things to get the emotion out. That fuel makes us get wonky when we're not aware of it. Okay, so let's, let's, let me give you an example. Let's say that I've been angry for a long time and I'm really not in touch with my anger. And it builds and it builds and it builds in the anger. It's like a gas tank that gets more and more filled. Well, eventually, if I'm angry enough, I'm gonna, I'm gonna act that emotion out. So I might say something hurtful to somebody. You're an idiot, whatever it might be. You know, use language that I shouldn't use or say hurtful things. Or I might not just use my words to express that anger, to, to act out the anger. I might use my body. So maybe I get angry and I punch somebody or I push somebody or I kick somebody, whatever it might be. Okay. That's how emotion makes us act wonky. So that's like anger as an example. Here's another one. Let's say I feel sad. For whatever reason, I feel sad. And it's inside of me. And so again, remember, you know, anger, we can think of anger as gasoline. Well, let's think of sadness as propane, you know, uh, another type of fuel. Well, it builds, the sadness builds, and it builds, and it builds, and I'm not aware of it, and I'm not managing it, but that fuel builds up, and then it, eventually I'm going to act it out. And so maybe because I'm so sad, I start cutting myself because I don't know what else to do, and that's just how I'm getting my sadness out, by cutting myself. That's wonky, you know, not, not cutting myself isn't helpful behavior. Okay, so let me, let me do one more example of how emotion can make us act wonky. So I talked about anger, I talked about sadness. What about anxiety? That's another emotion, or fear, same thing, basically. So let's say that I'm really anxious, and it could be about anything. Let's say I'm anxious about my school because I'm not sure I'm gonna do well, or let's say I'm anxious about my friends because it feels like they're being mean to me, or let's say I'm anxious about what's going on at home because it seems like we've all been fighting a lot. So that anxiety is building and building and building. So we talked about gasoline, we talked about natural gas or, or propane. And then let's find the, the third, let's call anxiety. Let's say that's electricity, building up and building up and building up. And I'm not aware of it, okay? I mean, I'm not paying attention to it, but that anxiety is building and building and building. Well, what can happen then for me to get the anxiety out the way that I act out is, what if I started looking at porn? That's my behavior to get this anxiety out, to make my anxiety go away. So do you see now how emotion, all it is, is fuel. And when we experience emotion, we're experiencing fuel. And the more the emotion builds up, the more fuel we have inside of us. And all of that fuel inside of us is going to drive us to certain behaviors. Okay. So that's sort of the, the step one is, is understanding that this emotion is fuel and it's going to fuel certain kinds of behaviors. Now, the scripture tells us, for example, be angry and sin not. Okay. Now, that's, that's an important thing to, to understand there because it's not saying don't be angry. It's saying be angry, but don't sin. And I think what that means is it's okay for the fuel to build up, but don't let that fuel, that emotion, lead you to behaviors that are hurtful. We can call that behavior sin. So what happens is a lot of times when we grow up or whatever we see in the world around us, if people get angry... That fuel builds up, and then they use the anger and express it or act out the, the, the emotion and hurt other people. Sometimes we think, oh, anger is bad, because look at what it did. That anger fueled hurtful behavior. Here's the solution. Let's don't do anger. Let's just not get angry. And if we cannot get angry, then we know we're never going to have, we're, we're never going to engage in hurtful behavior. Or we could say, Oh, depression. Well, some people, they start cutting themselves when they feel sad. So here's the deal. Let's just don't get sad. And if we don't get sad, then we know we're never going to start cutting ourselves. Okay? 
Another one, anxiety. If anxiety leads you to, to go look at pornography, then you could say, here's the solution to that. Because pornography, looking at pornography, that's sin. That's that behavior that we're, we're talking about that's not helpful. We don't want that. So let's just, let's just not be anxious. So what we're doing is we're saying, we're, we're sort of missing the, the, the point here. Because we're saying these fuels, so if I can go back to that, like gasoline and, and electricity and propane, all of that, this stuff can explode. So let's just get rid of gasoline. Let's just get rid of electricity because it could be dangerous, right? Well, that's one way to think about it, but here's another way to think about it. If I'm an engineer, I look at the, the battery, you know, let's say this electricity right here, and I say, yep, if I put one finger there and one finger there, bam, that could shock me. That's not good. But I also know if I put that battery in my truck, that battery is really helpful because it can power my truck, and my truck is a tool that will make my life better. Same thing with the gasoline. Man, if I put a, a match in that gasoline, kaboom, it's going to be dangerous for everybody. This, the, 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 what we're after, though, it's like, no, don't get, to the ga get rid of the gasoline. Find out how to use it. Oh, and if I put the gasoline in my truck, it also can make that machine go better. Same thing with natural gas. If I'm around natural gas and I light a match, kaboom, it could explode. The answer is don't get rid of the, the natural gas. The answer is, well, how do you connect it, for example, to a stove? Because if I connect the, the fuel to the right machine, that machine can make my life better, okay? So the same thing is true with emotion. Yes, emotion can make us act wonky when we're not sure what to do with the fuel. But the answer is not, don't get rid of the emotion. Don't ignore the emotion. The answer is to acknowledge the emotion and then figure out what do I do with it? How can I use this fuel to make my life better in the same way that I can look at gasoline and say, how can I use gasoline to make my life better? How can I use propane to make my life better? How can I use electricity to make my life better? And all of these fuel sources power machines that make my life better. All of these emotions power behavior in me that make my life better. That's how we get to be angry and sin not. It's be angry and express the anger in ways that make your life better. Okay, so let's talk more about that then. Um, how can emotions make us act wise? Now we're getting to really what we want to do. You know, this, this idea of be angry and sin not. Experience your emotion, but don't let it make you act wonky. So here's the, here's the little roadmap for that. Step one, name the feeling. Whatever you're feeling, just name it. Um, and so some of you might remember my, my, my two boys. Isaiah was the older one and Andrew was the younger one. And they're very, very different. Andrew is, he just has this wonderful ability to know his emotions. I mean, even when he was a little kid, if you asked him how he was feeling, he would tell you, I feel happy, I feel sad, I feel confused. You know, the other day I asked him, how you doing? How are you feeling? And he said, I'm, I'm feeling um, a little bit down, but there's a ray of hope because I, I've got a party I'm going to this weekend. Like, he's just really in touch with his emotions. Isaiah, on the other hand, <laughs> not so much. When you ask Isaiah, how are you feeling? You're going to get three answers. One, I'm okay. Number two, I'm mad. And number three, uh-uh. Okay is not an emotion. Uh-uh is not an emotion. Mad is an emotion. And, and so he's missing two out, of, you know, two out of three of those he's eating wrong. But that, that's his whole repertoire. I'm okay. I'm angry. Uh-uh. Right? So the first thing we need to do, if we're going to use this emotion, this fuel inside of us, to power behaviors that make our life better, we got to be able to name the fuel. Like, I've got to be able to dis distinguish that's gasoline, that's electricity, that's propane, because what I hook those fuels up to can be really, really helpful or really, really hurtful. I don't want to put the gasoline on my stove. That's going to be bad. I don't want to put the propane in my truck. That's not going to work, okay? So the first thing i got to do is name the fuel, name the emotion. So here's the deal, boys. Um, some of you girls, but boys. In, in America, we are trained as men to cut off your emotion. That's sort of, for whatever reason... There's this idea that if you're a real man, you don't feel emotion. Ugh, man, I could go on for days about how hurtful that is to you, young men. Don't believe it. 
Don't believe it. And let me just tell you, real men feel emotion. In fact, I would argue that the most successful, powerful, godly men feel emotion very, very deeply, and they manage it well. So for boys, we're sort of trained to, to not feel emotion. And man, that's problematic. That's problematic because imagine, imagine if we were trained not to understand what gasoline is, not to understand what electricity is. And we're like, oh, I don't know, I just don't do gasoline. Well, great. Then what happens when you put a match and it explodes and you say, well, I just, I was never trained to understand what gasoline is. So that's why experiencing emotion is so, so important, especially for, for young men. You've got to be able to get into your emotions. And, and, and we hear this all the time, all the time. When, when guys feel emotion, stop being a sissy. Suck it up. Get over it. That kind of stuff, man, hurtful, hurtful, toxic, 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 not good at all. So men, just know, just know you have permission to feel. You have permission to experience emotion, okay? So, so I might ask you, how are you feeling? And you're like Isaiah, uh uh-huh. Well, actually, uh uh-huh is not an emotion. So what do you do then? You do something like this. Uh Uh-oh, hold on one sec. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I don't have it here. Um, I thought I had. Let me check that. Okay. So the first question is, how are you feeling? Name the feeling. Identify the fuel. Is it gasoline? Is it electricity? Is it natural gas? Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it anger? Well, again, if you're Isaiah, you have three options and two of them don't even count. If you look up here on this feelings chart, you don't see, uh, uh-huh, and you don't see good. Good is not an emotion. Fine is not an emotion. These are emotions. So you may say, I don't know what I'm feeling. That's legit. Well, this is where you find out. Find an emotions chart. As weird as that sounds, this names all of our feelings, you know, all the things that we can feel. So if you don't have the language for it, if you don't understand how to, how to distinguish gasoline from electricity, this is like a roadmap of fuel, of emotional fuel. So find, find a, have an emotions chart. That's why, like when you see these in your counselor's office or wherever it might be in your classroom, that's what they're there for, is to help us know what's going on inside of us, to identify the fuel. So, number one, you name the emotion. It's happy, it's sad, it's, it's confused, it's whatever it is, whatever the fuel is. Then you connect the feeling to a wonky behavior. When I feel angry, man, I, I talk trash. When I feel angry, I slander other people. When I feel angry, I gossip. When I feel angry, I punch, I hit, I kick. When I feel sad, I shut down and I withdraw. When I feel sad, I cut myself. When I feel sad, I eat food that I shouldn't be eating. Okay, so then you start to say, oh, this is where that fuel is hooked up to the wrong behavior. This is where that fuel is hooked up to the wrong machine, right? So then you figure out, oh, now I need to change that. So then you go to the next step. Um, Let's see here. Hold on. Yeah. Um, so you say, when I feel sad, I used to hit people, or whatever it might be. Then you connect the feeling to a wise behavior. Next time I feel sad or angry, I will, let's say anger. Next time I feel angry, instead of talking trash about somebody, instead of being mean to somebody, instead of hitting or kicking somebody, I'm going to take some deep breaths. That's great. That's called being angry and not sinning. So you're using that fuel and connecting it to a behavior that actually makes your life better. So here's what's so cool about this roadmap, about knowing what the fuel source is, knowing what the the energy is, the emotion, and then connecting it to the right behavior. When you realize that, any emotion can help you. Any emotion, even when you feel sad, as crazy as it sounds, when you feel sad, the energy of sadness can actually make your life better. You can find ways to go into that fuel, connect it to behaviors that will make your life better. When you feel angry, you can understand, oh, that's another fuel. How can I channel that into behavior that will make my life better? How can my anger make me better? So there's no more need to fear emotion. There's no more need to ignore emotion. There's no more need to suppress or squash emotion because you realize, oh, emotion is fuel, and it can actually help me. Any emotion can help me live my life better. So Fred Rogers, he he had this series way back when called 
Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Raise your hand if you've ever watched Mr. Rogers. Oh, man, see, cool. I love, I love Fred Rogers. And he said famously to me, all emotions are mentionable and all emotions are manageable. And that's what he's talking about. So the, so the physically healthy person, the physically healthy person is the person that eats healthy food, you know, and, and powers their machine appropriately. And you know they're healthy because they can move around, they're good at sports, you know, there's, there's no illness in their body. And that's the, the evidence of physical well-being is your body can do what it's supposed to do. Well, you know somebody is emotionally healthy when they're able to get into any emotion and it doesn't freak them out and they don't repress it and they say, oh, emotion, it's fuel, great. How do I connect that fuel to the right behavior to make my life better? That's emotional well-being. And when we live that life, when we're not uh, avoiding or fearing depression or anger or any emotion, anxiety, and, and we're, we're able to bring it into our lives and incorporate it and then act it out in ways that are healthy, that's emotional resilience. That means that when I can do that day after day after day after day and learn how to hook up the energy to the right behavior, then I'm much less at risk of having a depressive disorder, an anxiety disorder, an eating disorder, any kind of, of mental illness uh, because I'm so focused on mental wellness. Same thing is true with my body. If I'm focused on physical wellness and physical well-being and eating what I need to be eating, I'm much less at risk of physical illness. I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not as likely to get sick. Same thing is true emotionally or psychologically. If I practice this roadmap with my emotions, then I'm much less at risk for experiencing significant depression or anxiety or anything else. Okay, so that's that. Um, so again, we can think of emotion as fuel or power. And the, the thing we're asking is how do I put that fuel and connect it to the right behavior? Now, last thing, what can I do to help a friend who is having challenging emotions? Um, and, you know, uh, we all experience this, you know, emotions that are, that are difficult for us, whatever it is, fear, anxiety, we're not sure what to do with it. Well, what if you have a friend and, and your, your spidey sense starts to tingle and you're thinking like, man, something's up with, with him or her. What do you do with that? Well, number one, ask this, the same question that I started off this morning. How are you feeling? Go to the emotion because that's the fuel that's driving everything. How are you feeling? Don't ask, are you okay? Because okay is not an emotion. Ask, how are you feeling? And they may say, like Isaiah, oh, I'm fine, right? Great. And, and if, that's, if that's all they say, then that's great, okay? But here's another question you can ask them. Is there anything I can do to help you? So in an ideal scenario, let's say we're, we're running track or playing sports together, or we're studying together, we're in the class together, we're eating lunch together, and I'm sitting with my friend and something feels weird about them. But, you know, I just know that their sort of emotion feels off. So I'll say to them, how are you feeling right now? And they may say, I'm happy or I'm, I'm angry, I'm, I'm confused. Great, thank you. Is there anything I can do to help you? Just that simple, what can I do to help you? Well, you can listen. Um, well, you can just sit here with me and be with me. You can leave me alone and let that person tell you what, what you can do to help them. It's just real straightforward. How are you feeling and what can I do to help you? And the more we, we practice asking those questions of each other, the more help that we can be to each other as, as we work through this. Okay, so there we go. That was the roadmap. Now we understand what emotion is. It's fuel. That's all emotion is. It's just this energy, this fuel that builds up inside of us, any emotion. Um, when we're not paying attention to the fuel, it makes us act wonky. It makes us do things that the Bible calls sin. But when we learn to pay attention to the fuel, when we learn to identify what kind of fuel it is, then we can, we can connect it to behaviors that actually make our life better and we rise up and live a better life. So we can experience the emotion and not only are we not sinning, we're actually doing things that are really good and loving, okay? Um, and then what can you do to help a friend if they're going through a difficult time? Just ask them, how are you feeling? Listen, and then say, ah, what can I do to help you? 
All right, so that's the roadmap. And if we do this, then this just, um, it doesn't guarantee that we're never going to experience significant depression or anxiety. But this is how we keep our, our emotional well-being intact. This is how we maintain a, a sense of emotional well-being. All right, so I'm going to end there, and I'm going to pray for us now. Lord, thank you for giving us emotions, this fuel that you've, you've created within us, um, and we appreciate that. And we, we do ask that you would give us wisdom so that we could know our emotions more clearly, that we could identify them more clearly, and then that we would have wisdom to connect the fuel to the behaviors that please you, to the behaviors that honor you, and to the behaviors that demonstrate love to ourselves and the people around us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.